Jasper, and welcome back to the last piece of heart of the Legend of Zelda the Wind Waker HD. Last time we did the shop quest and some other odds and ends, and this time, yes, we are ending it all. Unless I decide to do another bonus video, I was kind of contemplating it, making another video of the GameCube version. Just for comparison's sake, I haven't decided if I'm actually going to go through with it or not, but in any case, this is a time quest. I'm going to explain. No, wait, this is so slow. I'm gonna just run. You fill the water with the bottle with force water. You can use it multiple times, but it loses its force freshness after just 30 minutes. After that, it becomes normal water. Look at the top corner of the screen, and you can see a timer next to the bottle that's ticking down. This is new, I think. I'm pretty sure there wasn't a timer in the GameCube version, and the timer is much appreciated, actually. That being said, this is so much easier than it was originally. So let's check the map. There's one at the Cliff Plateau Isles, directly east of where we are. So that's a convenient way to start us off. Um, this one kind of sucks. You have to go through like a secret cavern, actually, to actually find it. Um, that kind of sucks. No, so let's see. You have to hook shot our way up. So I, I forgot if we need the hook shot to grapple. <laughs> yeah, you can see the tree up there, but we can't do the easy route because this is a Zelda game. Why not make it as hard as possible? So, oh freaking heck! I'm wasting so much time right now. At least that's what I would be saying if I was playing the GameCube version. <laughs> uh, the Wii U version is much easier. As I said, they give you a timer. They don't just make you fumble around blind. They actually give you a timer. Um, f fudge. Um, trying not to swear as much in real life, that's why I'm saying stuff like fudge. <laughs> um, So, differences. The key difference is you have 30 minutes instead of 20 minutes. Yes, in the original, you only have 20 minutes to do this entire side quest. In addition, yes, because there's more nonsense, think about it, actually. and try. To just, I'm going to give you a moment to try to figure out why this would be harder on the GameCube version. Well, if you haven't thought about it like this, you can sail so much faster in this game than in the original. So in addition to having more time, you can also complete the quest in less time origin than in the original. So it's like, to me, the added time limit is so stupid because they give you the swift sail. It's like you don't need to go any faster than you already are going. Um... Well, that's one. We have some more to go. Also, if you at any point, if the water runs out, you have to restart the entire quest. That's another thing I should mention. Um, so, next we should warp to... Southern Fairy Island. You could sail there, but it'd be a huge waste of time. Um, but yeah, if you're playing on this game, on this on the GameCube version, the Godspeed, but if you're playing on the Wii U version, no sweat. Like, I'm not kidding, when I did this on my first playthrough of the HD version, I'm pretty sure I actually managed to do the entire thing in like, 10 minutes. <laughs> to give you an idea. So, that's how much faster this quest is on the GameCube, than on the GameCube. Um, on the GameCube, it's actually apparently- I've never done it on the GameCube version, because of YOLO, but apparently it's really stressful in the GameCube version, because you have such a tiny little time limit, 20 minutes, and also no swift sale, so it takes so much longer. Um, apparently, in that case, 20 minutes is actually a pretty strict time limit. I don't even remember doing anything on Shark Island throughout the duration of this LP. I don't remember doing a single thing here. Um, oh well. If I didn't, there must not be anything for it. Oh yeah, you have to hit like multiple switches to open up the hole. And it's probably just rupees. 
during this game, <laughs> make you work, and then just give you rupees. So that's two, Shark Island done. And this time, you need to warp two. Yeah, if I hadn't derped up so badly at the, in, uh, the, the Cliff Plateau, I'd probably saved a good minute by now. I'm not really sweating, to be honest. It's so easy to do in this game. Um, yeah, in the Game 2 version, I would be panicking, like, throughout the entire run of this. I would be panicking big time, but this is so much easier in this version. So, Great Fish, uh, that little corkscrew island, where, as I said on Big Bang Theory, uh, an any kind slope wrapped helically around an axis. Um, basically... Actually, it technically isn't, because this isn't really a plane, per se, but that's just being picky. Actually, this part is, but, um... Yeah, I, I used to watch Big Bang Theory, I don't really anymore. The show kind of went downhill after Season 4, and now it's just kind of the hipster show to hate. <laughs> uh, and to be honest, I don't hate the show, I just don't find it funny anymore. So, now we, that we've done that, we need to go to Neil Rock. So we need to go like this. Gee, that's hard to spot. I just love the draw distance in this version. It's so nice being able to see like a mile away. Um, it's actually funny because I grew up in Southern California, or Central California. I can't remember. It's been so long. I was a kid at the time, of course. Um, but it was like really smoggy down there. Central Valley, California. So, to me, it just, it's kind of like a thinking back on it. I remember it being kind of like a video game with like really bad draw distance because <laughs> you could barely see that far ahead at, at any given moment. It's like the, Cal the, the California draw distance is really bad. You need to patch that. <laughs> now, living in near Seattle, it's like you can see like a mile away. Easily, so totally. Well, I was assuming it's not majorly overcast. I should also point out. <laughs> so many Let's Players live in Seattle. It's kind of cool. Um, I've never met any Let's Players. But just to think about the possibility, of just like walking down the street of like Seattle and then like running into someone famous, is, at least to you, everyone else would be like, "Who is this?" But to me, it's kind of cool. Um, so that's four now? Yeah, that's our four. Um, so now we're working to the Tower of the Gods, you might be wondering why, but we have to go to the private oasis, and thus we could either work to the Forest Haven, or to the Tower of the Gods. The guide says Tower of the Gods, so yet again, I'm using Zelda Dungeons Guide for where they're all located. Um, so we need to go south, so direct... Actually, it's pointing south. Uh, yeah, we're going south. <laughs> Just making sure. Uh, and I don't trust my eyes to really be that good at recognizing islands from a silhouette. Private Oasis, wow, we're almost done. See how much faster this is in, in the, um... In the, uh... The original? I mean, if you played the original and tried to do this quest, let me know, because... I'd really be fascinated to hear how long it takes you. Like... Okay, if I were to do a question of the day kind of thing, my question of the day would be, how long did this quest take you on your first time? And did you use a guide? Because <laughs> in my case, I am using a guide. Um, just to make sure I remember everything. Because uh, I can't remember where all these guys are. If they don't, the game doesn't tell me. So now... We need to go back to the tower, and... Oh, shoot, where did I park? <laughs> this is me in real life sometimes. Where did I park? Um... <laughs> but, yeah, I would be very fascinated to compare times with people. Especially compared to the GameCube, because of just how long it, I recall it taking in the GameCube when I attempted it and failed. Again. <laughs> Attempted and failed being the operative term. Also, I don't think these cutscenes count for the timer. 
So just go by the in-game time. Um, let me sail east, I think, to the fairy island. Fairy, fairy island, or eastern fairy island. This is what it's actually called. Um, am I going the right way? Wait a minute. I'm dumb. It's north. Thorn Fairy Island is actually the one far east. East Fairy Island is actually kind of in the middle of the map. <laughs> yeah, that makes total sense. Um, but eh, okay, that was like time loss, but we only have like two more to go. The guide on Salt Detention actually says that using the route I'm taking, that it's, they have about like two or three minutes left. Um, on the GameCube version. So yeah, that's really tight, actually. Really tight timer. Timer. Um, so now we have to go to Tingle Island, same reason as before, because we can't warp to Mother Child Isles. This is one thing that I've always hated about both versions, that you can't just warp anywhere, you have to warp all these specific squares. That's one thing I kinda hope they fix about Twilight Princess, adding in more warp points. Cause like Wind Waker, they didn't add any more warp, so sometimes you do have to sail a really far distance. Just cause... Just cause there are no warps nearby. Yeah, even though that would mean having to fight more Twilight, um... I I know I'm not using the correct term. I don't remember what those oh shadow beasts. I think they're called shadow beasts. Um even if you'd have to fight more of them, it'd be worth it for more warps, right? So you don't have to run across like huge distances like in the original. Cause if there's one complaint I have, it's that the world of Twilight Princess is a little too big. Uh, which is actually funny to think about a game being too big for its own good. Um, I seem to recall reading that argument about Twilight Princess recently, or Xenoblade actually, Xenoblade Chronicles X. I haven't played Xenoblade Chronicles X because I'm sitting here playing Wind Waker. <laughs> I was like, screw it, I'm gonna finish Wind Waker before doing anything else. Um, I have so many games to get through this holiday break, the, when I'm recording this. like. Professor Layton vs. Phoenix, right? It's Attorney I'm trying to play through, and I'm not getting into it very much, which is kind of depressing me. Um, I'm not feeling like, very engaged with the plot. I think it's because it's a little too supernatural, because Layton and Phoenix Wright are very, both very logical series, so I've, I'm not really crazy about the overemphasis on, super, on the supernatural. Um... I need to finish Tales of Vesperia, which is a really good game, but I just keep forgetting to finish it. I have the song, uh, Kanye Wa Nash Day on my phone, actually. I was joking with someone that's to remind me that, that every time it comes up, it's an intentional reminder for me to finish Tales of Vesperia. Um, yeah, I have the Japanese version of the song. I should also be pointing out on the main theme. Um, I want to do a Let's Play of Symphonia, but at the same time, it's like, maybe I should try to finish up Vesperia before trying to do a Let's Play of Symphonia. Um, Symphonia is really good, I'd probably do New Game Plus though, just to avoid to limit grinding. 10 times the XP would be really nice, <laughs> to be completely fair. Um, or even 5 times, I don't know how many points I actually have. I would not play Dawn of the New World, I hated that game. And we finished with a good... Uh, like, we, it took about 9 minutes 45 seconds. If you want to be precise. That was fast. Video is still about 15 minutes though for some reason. Oh yeah, because it doesn't count cutscenes. So that tree is huge now. So, we have... The last piece of heart. Ha! Last piece of heart type. Ha ha ha! Cut all the grass. And I honestly don't know what else to do in this game. Oh, derp. I thought of something I never showed. Let's go back to Forest Haven. 
<laughs> the water timer is still going down. <laughs> it's like 1951, 1950, 1949. It's like you can stop the timer now. It's like I kind of already finished the side quest, but uh, okay. <laughs> Whatever floats your boat, I guess. And if it's the Battle of Gales, then that's even better. <laughs> that floats your boat. Get it? Um. Now, for this next part, I'm not super confident I can do this very well. Uh, oh yeah, it pauses and cut time. Oh yeah, because we were checking the map so much, it would pause then too. Hey, that's lucky. Um, so, again, because this is probably going to be something that I won't actually show in great detail, I'll just tack it onto the end of this, and plus this would be out. This would be a really short video, otherwise. Um, I'm not gonna... Ow. I'm just gonna ignore you guys. Have fun just doing what you're doing. Um, I have to kill this guy though. No, I don't. I can just run to the side and grapple up. Well, more you know. Um, jump across here. Here. And, yeah, I'm not sure if I want to let's play Ratchet and Clank at launch or if I want to wait a couple months because I I have this gut feeling that a lot of people will be wanting to let's play it. <laughs> uh, so part of me wants to just wait it out a little bit. Yeah, the time <laughs> timer is still going. We'll be done with this video by the time the timer runs out. I'm sure if you save and quit, that the timer would also reset then and just becomes no normal water. I've never really tried. I, I probably would have in this version. Yeah, I mean, again, the one guy that was using Zelda Dungeon said that that re I did would usually leave you off with about you know two to three minutes to spare, and we had like twenty minutes to spare. <laughs> so that's how much easy. That's just how easy this quest is in this version. Like seriously, I wanted this to be its own video because I figured it'd be like at least 20 minutes but I forgot how easy it is in this version and I forgot how well my own playthrough of this version went more you know uh so again we could drop down there let's go here um and then shoot up one more and then see where this takes us. I don't actually know where this takes us, to be, <laughs> to be fair. Um, and if I even have enough items to do this. Or do I just glide down? I'm trying to remember if you have to glide down or if you have to hit a switch. Because I'm pretty sure there's a switch somewhere. Or... Yeah, it's in that alcove down there. Yeah, I'm trying to remember how to actually do this part. Let's just try gliding and see what happens. I I thought it was a death plane now. This high up. Is it like that? I can't tell where what direction I'm actually facing. Glide. And oh and yeah, this'll work. This'll totally work. Wow, we did not need double magic for this. Doing this can sometimes reduce fall damage if you um if you're closer, if you sword swipe closer to the ground, I did not, obviously, so that's a problem. So, do you have a pair? Yeah, I totally have a pair there. Um, so let's use it. Yay, seagull! And then we can just fly you, fly you to the moon. I don't know the lyrics of the song, so that's all I'm going to say about that. Uh, seagull? <laughs> seagull? I'm sure you could hit that with an arrow too. This guy must be some kind of- I think this guy's like the curator of the gallery. Grand curator. Um... Or was that the quote? I'm trying to remember a quote from the doc from Doctor Who. Anyway, no, this guy isn't the cur curator. So I gave this guy a pictograph and he gave me this figurine return. Oh, talk about cool. This will be all the rage. Figurines are cool. Um, speaking, speaking of Doctor Who. But anyway, we need to get our camera out. Welcome. Welcome to Nintendo Gallery Figurine Palace Heart. 
This is your first time here, isn't it? Did one of our members provide you with an introduction, I hope? Well, actually, you did. We've been losing memories due to members due to our lack of gimmicky attractions, but we don't worry. True fans know we're the coolest. Blah blah, I'll explain it myself because this is long winded. Basically, if we show him a pictograph that says good in front of it, I never actually deleted some of these. <laughs> Tetra is actually a good, an important one because. Oh, hey, it fills you with inspiration. You saw a really cool picture graph, it fills you with inspiration. I think you can give him multiples also. Um. Yeah, I think I'm not 100% sure, but I'm sh pretty sure in one of the games, he would actually take one at a time. <laughs> um, that kind of sucks. But in this game, I think he takes multiples. Again, I'm not entirely sure about that, but... Um, uh, yeah, my memory isn't the best. <laughs> I've got to have derpies from these pictures I took for. Um... Oh, I just noticed there's a replica of um, a bunch of stuff. There's the pirate ship. It's not like... Uh, let's see, I'm trying to look at all this stuff. First person! Wait, there's the windfall thing. Up on that shelf are the... the, the, the line, that's Nehru and the, of course and another statue, a submarine. No, don't know what that uh, grayish ship is, actually. Let's see, there's the Keton mask, the Guan mask, the bunny hood, and that mask next to the Guan mask. I don't actually know what that is. I know, I know what it is, I just forgot what it was because I played Majora's Mask last year for the first time. So I do not remember what that mask is. I recognize the other three though. So... Uh, aside, you notice there are a lot of doors, that's worrisome. So let's go change time. Back to the future. Um, or not. <laughs> Just go ahead one day. And once more. I'm gonna miss playing this game again. I'll play on my own time again, I'm sure, someday. But it's been kind of nice having an excuse to replay it, aka okay, let's playing. <laughs> so, we attacked him again. I'll come like your figurine base request has been fulfilled. It's been a long time since I've done the work this exceptional heart. Go in that door there to check it out. I was completely overcome with the creative urge after make, seeing what you gave me. I ended up making lots of figurines. But all that artistic spirit made me a little absent-minded, so I don't exactly remember which room I placed them all in. Why don't you go look and have a look inside? If you turn in one, he'll tell you which room it is. If you turn in a bunch, he'll be like, I can't remember where any of these are. Um. Ha! Figurines. Um. Okay, I'm a little confused. How we have all of these guys. Maybe just because, I don't know, maybe we got all of them with Tetra. I don't actually know. A lot of them have little descriptions. <laughs> uh, this was like ami Amiibo before Amiibo. <laughs> um, there are several pictographs that are incredibly difficult to find, actually. Um, of some special characters. I'm pretty sure you have to go through Lenzo to get them. But I don't remember how, off the top of my head. Um, yeah, lots of figurines. I'm not going to make any promises for this Let's Play of actually collecting any of them, obviously, because this takes forever. Um, like, seriously. Because uh, you have to actually do New Game... And the, okay, GameCube version, and also Wii U version. You have to do New Game Plus, or Hero Mode. Actually, do this. Um, no, did I say hero mode? Cause I meant master quest, but I don't. I don't think that's the term either. And speaking of master quest, we actually do need to go over that too. I think once you've 100% the main game, you're probably wondering, wait, but 
didn't some new quests unlock? Yes, it did. The differences are treasures charts will be in the same place, but the actual treasures will be slightly off the coast, will be farther away from the main island than in this version. Basically, it's to make it hard to identify which island each treasure chart corresponds to. Um, yeah, treasures are slightly harder to find. Though, to be honest, when I played hard mode, I actually found it easier. Because, I don't know, some of them were just a lot easier. Uh, in addition, Link does not have the green tunic. He has the hero's new clothes, which actually are invisible, and thus he just wears his, as people call it, shrimp shirt throughout the entire game, the blue shirt from the opening. In addition, Errol will also be wearing her pirate dress from the ending cutscene. And there's an additional modifier that you might have noticed on the title screen back in the day uh, that said hero mode. If you turn on hero mode, I think enemies take more damage and also... Okay, enemies take more damage to defeat and Link actually takes double damage from enemy attacks. So if you want to really challenge yourself, you can do like a new game plus human mode run and then try to re recollect everything but that's actually the kind of sucky part the only things that carry over are pictographs and the nintendo gallery items rupees pieces of heart and other types of items like you know magic armor anything that you basically have to get except the pictograph box you have to recollect. So basically, it's this, the New Game Plus mode is basically designed to make it easier to get to the early Nintendo Gallery stuff with that. You know, because you don't have to pick the graph box until later on. So you have to, you know, get all the pictures of some of the early characters like Errol during that point. With that being said, I think we have done enough of the Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker. I can't think of anything else I have to go over. The only thing else I have gone over is I don't think I ever even stepped foot in the potion shop in, on Windfall Island. So you can basically turn in chew jelly for potions if you want. Basically I just had like soup or fairies in bottles the entire game. So I just didn't need it. But if you need potions you can investigate that. Anyway next time. Sail off to the unknown with a new let's play of something. I don't know what we do let's play to be honest, but I hope you join me for whatever I come up with next, and I'll s hopefully see you then. And, and this is getting really long winded, but thank you for watching this let's play. Well, it's just a little bit of Wind Waker. Again, this is one of my favorite games of all time, so I was really happy to actually. This is really cool actually getting to replay it like this. Yeah, thanks for watching.